Welcome to another episode of Marketing School. <laughs> I'm Eric Sue, And I'm Neil Patel. And today we're going to talk about how to do internal linking the right way. So I can start first. Go for it. Yeah. So uh, one thing is I've seen people overuse this a lot. Um, you got to be careful here, especially if you're using your homepage because your homepage has a lot of the, the equity um, in terms of like, you know, the, the you can call it domain authority, you can call it domain rank, whatever you want to call it. These are kind of made up metrics. Um, but your, your homepage is generally very strong. And so how do you leverage the equity, the link equity that your homepage has? A lot of people, what they do is they put in their footers, they just put a bunch of like anchor text, uh, rich anchor text keywords and a link to their, their top pages, right? To try to get them to rank higher. That does work. When I was at a company before, we got them to rank number one for learn web design and learn web development by just putting links in the footer. But if you overdo that, if you spam it, if you, and it's very easy for algorith algorithmically to detect if you're overdoing it, um, you are gonna get hit with a penalty. So you just gotta be careful there. But if you do it the right way where you just, you're being selective about the top pages, maybe top categories, um, that you want to rank higher. Um, that's how you can be smart about leveraging internal linking uh, from your homepage. Yeah, and when you're leveraging internal linking, another strategy that works extremely well is look at the head, the pages that are ranking for head terms, and there's all these long tail phrases that you could be going after. Create content around those long tail phrases, pages around it. So for example, if you have a guide to SEO, for example, Moz has a guide called the Beginner's Guide to SEO. On the intro page, they can then link to a page that talks about on-page SEO. They can link to another one that talks about link building. They can link to another one just on sitemaps, whatever it may be. But what you'll find is by using internal linking and taking links from the main page that talks about a specific topic and driving people into sub pages, you'll find that those sub pages will rank really fast for all terms related around those head terms or that main page that you're already ranking for. Yeah, the example I like to look at is when is e-commerce website. So if you look at Zappos.com, uh, they they sell shoes uh, among uh, other things. And when you look at an e-commerce site, the, the way the site is structured, it's very it's it's very smart. You got the home page, and you got core category pages such as shoes, uh, dresses, sports shoes, whatever. Um, and then those category pages, what happens is, and you can see in the video, I start with the home page right here, and you got these category pages. And then you have these, uh, it might link to subcategory pages and then might link to product pages. And it just get, goes further and further down. Basically, you got to have a, a logical sitemap where it's very easy for a search spider to come and crawl it, right? Because they start from the top and then they might, they're, they're, they're basically following your internal links on like, this is a spider and it's going around and it's flowing throughout your website. But if you're not, especially if you're an e-commerce site and you have uh, thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of SKUs, what happens is if you don't have a good internal uh, linking structure, you don't have a logical structure, the search spiders can't find these other pages and they can't help you rank them, right? You got to help the search spiders help you. And in many cases, you're, you're trying to help Google. So how can you make your sitemap make sense uh, logically where you don't have to come back and try to fix it later? It's it's something that's foundational that you want to have right now instead of waiting down the road where you're wondering like how come I'm not getting more search traffic because sometimes when you make those adjustments to your your, your sitemap um, I've seen traffic increases for from 10 to 20 percent sometimes even more than that and be careful a lot of people just use rich anchor text and shove all these links in their sidebars or their footers it doesn't work as well as interlinking throughout your content just adding a big block of links and be like, hey, go find my most important pages and you're just doing this to shove in keywords and rank high. Sometimes you see a quick short-term boost, but what I've seen is it actually hurts you in the long run versus linking in the content. You should go back to all your old blog posts and find out if you're linking to some of your latest new ones. Every time we publish a new blog post, we go into older blog posts and enter a link old related blog posts to that newer one. And it ensures that all of our blog posts are building up internal links. All right, so that is it for today. But before we go, check out marketingschool.io slash stats. What we need you to do, because we're in the spirit of giving still, uh, is to rate, review, subscribe, share this podcast. And then once we get to 1 million downloads a month, you, once you go to that, that, that URL, you can see our progress. We're at about 800,000 downloads a month. But once we get to 1 million, we will give back. We will do a live event in Los Angeles where we'll get to meet each other. There's going to be free food. Uh, there is also going to be recordings as well. So it's in the spirit of giving. You give to us, we give to you. Marketingschool.io slash stats. Again, the action we need from you is to rate, review, subscribe, share this podcast, help us get there. We love you and goodbye.